In this video, we'll write the balanced net ionic equation for FeCl3 plus CaOH2. This is iron 3 chloride plus calcium hydroxide. The first thing we need to do for net ionic equations, we need to balance the molecular equation. This is the molecular equation. I can see that I have three chlorines here and two here, and then these hydroxides, two hydroxides, and then three hydroxides. So I think what I'd like to do is get this here to an even number. So if I multiply by two, I'll have two irons, but I'll have two times three, six chlorides. Let's put a three here. Balances the chlorides. Now I have three calciums. Let's put a three here. So that gives me three calciums, but I have three times two. That gives me six hydroxides. If I put a two here, two times three, six hydroxides. And now I have two irons as well. So everything is balanced. This is the balanced molecular equation. Next, we write the state for each substance. If you know your solubility rules, chlorides, very soluble. We're going to put an AQ after that. And then calcium hydroxide, this is a strong base. So we consider this a strong electrolyte. It's going to dissociate into its ions here. So we'll call that aqueous. Iron 3 hydroxide, hydroxides in general are insoluble with a few exceptions like calcium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. So since this is insoluble, it won't dissolve. These two things react and we get this insoluble compound. It's a solid and it's going to fall to the bottom of the test tube as a precipitate. So this FeOH3, this iron three hydroxide, it'll be a precipitate. And then we said that these chlorides are very soluble, aqueous. Now that we have our states, we can split the strong electrolytes into ions for the complete ionic equation. Iron, we don't know that it's a transition metal, but each chloride ion here is one minus. We have three of them. The iron is three plus. So we'll have our two iron three ions, and I won't write the states. Let's do that at the end. Plus two times three is six. So we'll have six chloride ions. Calcium's in group two. It'll be two plus, and the whole hydroxide is one minus. Good one to remember. So three calcium ions and then we'll have three times two, six of those hydroxide ions, that OH minus. So these are the reactants in our net ionic equation. In the products, we don't split solids apart in net ionic equations. This is a precipitate. So we're just gonna have two of these iron three hydroxides. Calcium, we said two plus chloride ion, each one is one minus. So we have three calcium ions and we'll have three times two, That'll give us six chloride ions, just like the reactants. So we have our complete ionic equation. Now we can cross the spectator ions out. They're on both sides of the complete ionic equation. So for the spectator ions, I can see in the reactants here on the top, I have six chloride ions. I also have that in the products. These are spectator ions. We can cross these out. They're the same. And then three calcium ions in the reactants and then three in the products. Those are spectator ions. We cross them out. What's left, that's the net ionic equation for FeCl3 plus CaOH2. I'll clean this up, write the states. We'll have our net ionic equation. So this is the balanced net ionic equation for iron three chloride plus calcium hydroxide. If you count the atoms up, they're balanced. The charge is balanced too. Two times three plus is six plus. Six times one minus is six minus. That gives us a net charge of zero. This is neutral, net charge is zero. We probably should reduce the coefficients. We can divide everything by two. That would give us one, three, one. And we don't write the one by convention. So this is the balanced net ionic equation for FeCl3 plus CaOH2. And this is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.